Hello and welcome. You're watching AD4 TV Radio News Update coming to you live from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. I am Adirayo Senami. Nigeria's President Muhammad Buhari has approved the appointment of Sunday Thomas as the Substantive Commissioner for Insurance and Chief Executive Officer of the National Insurance Commission. The Special Advisor to the Minister of Finance, Yunusa Abdullahi, said this in a statement issued this Sunday. Thomas replaced the immediate past Commissioner for Insurance, Mohamed Kari, as Acting Commissioner in July 2019. The statement added that Thomas, who has over three decades of experience in the industry as an operator and regulator, was appointed Deputy Commissioner in charge of technical matters by President Buhari in April 2017. The Adamawa State Government in Nigeria this Sunday denied receiving 42 COVID-19 patients from Gumbi State. An online paper on Saturday had reported the alleged transfer of patients by Gumbi State. But reacting to this development, Bashir Ahmed, the secretary to the Adamawa State Government, described the reports as untrue. No fewer than 788 Almanjiris in Nasara State, Nigeria, have been repatriated to their various states of origin in the country. The Nasara State Governor, Abdullah Isule, who made this known while addressing the first batch of the Almanjiris from the southern zone of the state this Sunday, said the purpose is for their parents to take proper care of them during COVID-19 pandemic. The Kano State Governor, Adlai Ganduje, says he has the approval of President Muhammad Buhari to relax the 14-day lockdown imposed on the state. The governor, in a statement by his chief press secretary, Abba Anwar, on Saturday evening, said Kano residents will be allowed to move about on Mondays and Thursdays. President Muhammad Buhari had announced a lockdown on the state during his address to the nation on Monday as part of the measures to curb the rising coronavirus infections recorded in Kano State. And now to global news. The Pan-African Initiative Freedom Movement has asked Chinese authorities to apologize to Africans and black people globally for using COVID-19 pandemic as an excuse to maltreat colored people residing in China. It also urged African leaders and Africans not to remain silent on the matter, noting that doing so will encourage the occurrence. Stating these last week in Accra, during a solidarity procession, the founder of the body, Jacob Caesar, said he's surprised that China has not publicly denounced the maltreatment of blacks. we we'll take a short break now. When we return, the Philippines suspends all passengers and commercial flights amid coronavirus outbreak. Stay tuned. Details coming shortly. Dear colleagues, as we continue to deal with the impact of the coronavirus, we are concerned that there's so much fake news about COVID-19 in circulation. Clearly, we're not just dealing with a pandemic, but an infodemic. As public relations practitioners, we urge all our registered professional colleagues in the NIPR FCT chapter, and indeed all citizens, to use the social media responsibly by only sharing information that is factual and authentic. If you or someone around you this place COVID-19 symptoms. Please do not hide or assist someone to hide the symptoms as you put yourself, health workers and others at risk. Working in the hospital also gives me the opportunity to let you know that um, COVID-19 is real. We should abide by the government regulations. We commend our Honorable Minister of FCT and the Minister of State FCT for their relentless efforts in the fight against coronavirus within the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. Dear FCT residents, dear professional colleagues, let us take responsibility, maintain social distancing, maintain physical distancing, practice frequent hand washing under running water for not less than 20 seconds and observe heightened personal hygiene stay safe let's stay alive together 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 this message is from the nigerian institute of public relations nipr fct chapter welcome back and thanks for staying with us the Philippines Airport Authority on Sunday temporarily suspended all passenger and commercial flights to and from the country to prevent the spread of coronavirus. 
In a statement released late Saturday night, the Manila International Airport Authority added that cargo flights, medical supplies, utility and maintenance flights will remain unhampered. According to the Philippines Department of Health, the country currently has 8,928 confirmed coronavirus cases and 604 deaths. Still on COVID-19 pandemic, the Ministry of Health in Singapore reported 657 new confirmed coronavirus cases, bringing the total number of infections to 18,205. The ministry said most of the cases are work permit holders residing in foreign workers' dormitories. Ten are Singaporeans. Singapore has announced plans to ease restrictions over the coming weeks, with businesses to resume fully from the 1st of June. The Indian police has said 18 laborers were found inside a concrete mixer in a desperate attempt to violate India's nationwide lockdown and travel home. The workers were caught when the truck carrying the cement mixer was pulled over by police in the state of Madhya Pradesh on Saturday. The police said the truck was impounded and the laborers sent to a quarantine center in Indore, while a formal complaint has been filed. Algerian singer Hamid Chariet, popularly known as Idir, has died in France at the age of 70. The tireless champion of the Kabyle and Berber cultures died of pulmonary disease. Idir became internationally famous with his lullaby, Vava Nova, in the 1970s and made a comeback in 1993. In a tribute to the singer, Algerian President Abdel Majid Tebon called him an icon of Algerian art and said, Algeria has lost one of its monuments. And now in sports, former Vice President Joe Biden pledged to cut funding to the United States Soccer Federation if women don't get equal pay to their male counterparts. The team's fight for equal pay was rejected this Friday when a federal judge, R. Gary Klausner, dismissed the players' claims that they were paid less than their men's national team. The judge added that his decision was built on the fact that members of the women's football team failed to prove any sort of wage discrimination under the Equal Pay Act. However, in a tweet on Saturday afternoon, the presumptive Democratic presidential nominee, Joe Biden, encouraged the women's national team not to give up their fight. Biden declared that the struggle is not over yet while calling for equal pay to be implemented now, all United States soccer will have to look elsewhere for World Cup funding if he's elected president. And that's it on 84 TV Radio News Update, coming to you live from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. You can join the conversation on our website at www.84tvradio.com. Please follow us on our social media platforms at 84 TV Radio on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn and Instagram. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel at 84TV Radio. Many thanks for watching. I am Adirayo Senami.